Good day, everybody. My name is Eileen Klein, and I was asked to talk to you about the Certified Information Security Manager certification. Yes, yet another cyber certification. So for this session, I'm going to do a quick overview of who I am, what my role is. Then I'm going to talk about the certification and how to get it, give you my opinion on whether or not it's worth it, and um, totally unrelated, just some tools and resources in this era of social distancing. And I hope you like the graphics in here. They just seem to be a little appropriate today. So first, I'm the Cybersecurity Program Coordinator for Arizona. My whole role is to help everyone in the state improve their cyber resilience. So I do a lot of public and private outreach. I do a lot of intelligence sharing. Um, I work out of our state fusion center mainly, which is the Arizona Counterterrorism Information Center. Woohoo! I'm helping the ACTIC build their cyber intel capability. And I get a lot of information about cyber threats, incidents, um, and I share as much of that as I possibly can with everybody I can. Um, I also talk with my peers across the state, or excuse me, across the country every week to get a picture of what's hitting the different geographic areas of the United States. And I work with a lot of government, private, federal, and other partners, which is really cool. So if you're interested, please sign up for my distribution list. Just send me an email at eileen.klein at phoenix.gov. You will see this email address a couple more times throughout this presentation, so don't panic. Now, just as in background, I've been working in cybersecurity for over 20 years now, hard to believe. Um, I was a sys engineer and sysadmin before that for a bunch of years. And I've been really lucky. I've done kind of a broad range of stuff in the cyber field. Just so you know, I do not consider myself technical any longer, although I used to be very technical. But I still speak it, um, and I talk to a lot of technical people and ask them stupid questions. So um, when I give presentations, I don't always include this slide, um, but I've earned a bunch of certifications. The one, actually the two that I think are most applicable to today's session, um, I do have a CISSP that I've had for a very long time, and I earned my CISM back in May of 2012. Woohoo! Um, so let's talk about the CISM. And again, I really do hope you like today's graphics. First, it is granted by an organization called ISACA. ISACA used to stand for the Information Systems Audit and Control Association, but they've now said that they go only by their acronym to reflect the broad range of IT and governance professionals. So basically, ISACA used to be just for auditors um, and again, computer IT info systems auditors. Um, but it's expanded a bit. They were started in 1967, which I actually didn't realize. And they currently have over 165,000 members in more than 180 countries. The website is isaka.org. You'll find on that site all types of information about the CISM exam as well as a bunch of the other um, information on the other certifications that they sponsor or grant. So according to ISACA, the CISM indicates expertise in info security governance, program development and management, incident management, and risk management. They basically say the CISM is for security professionals who want to move into the management track. So there are currently over 46,000 CISM holders. This is the average salary for CISM holders. 
and the certification is accredited, which is really cool. All right. And again, it's designed for those of us who manage, excuse me, manage, design, oversee, and assess um, an info security function or program. Now, to be eligible for the CISM, you need at least five years of experience in info security management. ISACA does say there are waivers available. So just so you know, um, the exam itself is 150 multiple choice questions. It's currently a computer-based and administered exam. Um, and you basically sign up, register on the ISACA website. It has a list of where you uh, can go to take it, the authorized testing centers. Uh, you pay for the exam. Um, the exams cost $575 for members and $760 for non-members um, based on the ISACA uh, membership costs. It's cheaper just to join ISACA. And once you go to take the exam, you have four hours to answer the 150 questions. So again, to become CISM certified and to maintain your certification. Well, first, you have to successfully pass the exam. Then you need to submit an application to prove that you meet the experience requirements. ISACA, like many other security organizations, have a code of ethics to which we must adhere. And like other certifications, you need to earn um, continuing professional education credits every year. ISACA has a three-year reporting cycle, and you need to earn at least 20 credits or CPE hours every year and 120 CPEs every three years. I know the math doesn't add up well, but that's what they say. Oh, also there's an annual maintenance fee. Um, once you pass the exam, you actually have five years to apply for the certification. The annual cost and this is actually from my renewal, is 225 So basic membership to ISACA is $135. The renewal fee was 45 And because I'm a member of the Phoenix chapter, that's another $45. Now, there are four domains that the exam covers. And on the screen, you'll see the percentage of the test for each domain. So InfoSec governance, risk management, program development and management, and security incident management. And again, here is the link for details on the job practice areas or these four domains. So the first domain. And this is a direct quote from ISACA. You need to be able to establish and or maintain an information security governance framework and supporting processes to ensure that the info security strategy is aligned with organizational goals and objectives. So basically, you need to know how to develop a strategy based on the business goals, the organization's risk tolerance, your key threats, your compliance requirements, emerging technology, organization culture, and other things. You need to be able to leverage available InfoSec governance frameworks for your program. And just so you know, I'm a huge proponent of plagiarizing others, also known as leveraging others. Why invent the wheel or reinvent the wheel when there are all kinds of InfoSec frameworks available, governance frameworks, everything from the NIST uh, cybersecurity framework to um, 
let's see, there's COVID, which I don't really consider a cybersecurity framework so much, um, to the ISO 27000 standards. Anyway, I have a good list of those if anybody wants some of them. Um, just send me an email. I have a whole presentation on security frameworks and stuff. Anyway, back to this domain, you also need to be able to manage your program. And that includes the planning, gaining support for it, budgeting, um, defining the roles and responsibilities, actually building, actually running, actually monitoring, and especially being able to communicate both up and down throughout your organization and sometimes outside of your organization about your program. All right, the second domain is information risk management. And again, from ISACA, you need to be able to manage information risk to an acceptable level based on the risk appetite in order to meet organizational goals and objectives. So basically, you need to know how to identify and classify your assets. You need to know how to identify and classify your business and legal protection requirements. Um, if you're a healthcare or if you are um, self-insured, you definitely have HIPAA requirements, for example. Uh, you need to know how to assess risks, threats, vulnerabilities, and build a risk management program, including monitoring your risks, monitoring compliance to the program, and reporting. And again, reporting may be within your organization, to your senior leaders, to people who are not in compliance, as well as occasionally to outside authorities. And you need to determine appropriate information security controls and whether they are effectively managing risk to an acceptable level. The third domain is information security program development and management. So this goes past domain one with domain one uh, understanding the framework. Now, or excuse me, domain one, understanding the governance framework. Now domain three, you actually have to build and run your information security program. So again, according to ISACA, in this domain, you need to be able to develop and maintain an information security program that identifies, manages, and protects the organization's assets while aligning to information security strategy and business goals, thereby supporting an effective security posture. I know that was a lot of words. So in this domain, you need to actually build or know how to build and run an InfoSec program. Again, the planning for it, gaining support, budget, defining roles and responsibilities, creating and running processes like change control and others, uh, monitoring, communicating. Uh, you need to make sure that you align the information security program and requirements into other business functions like HR and IT and finance. And you need to align your program processes into other business processes like mergers and acquisitions, system development, uh, business continuity and disaster recovery, hiring, firing, like especially terminating um, account access for terminated employees. That's like a prime example. Uh, make sure that you coordinate training, like security awareness training, with your HR folks, with your training folks, and make sure that you have contracts, um, security provisions in your contracts and align with your procurement folks. Next, you need to know how to create all the governance documents for your programs. This includes information security standards, guides, best practices, 
to guide and enforce and monitor compliance. Um, you need to be able to collect metrics and report on metrics and key performance indicators to make sure that folks are complying with your policies and your standards. Last but not least, you need to be able to promote a culture of security, including your basic um, security awareness training, making sure that gets out. But security awareness is not, as you know, a one-time event. That needs to be its own ongoing program. I will get off my soapbox on security awareness now. So fourth domain, information security, incident management. And I have learned security incident management is different from emergency management, although they are related. Anyway, as Isaka says, for InfoSec incident management, you need to be able to plan, establish, and manage the capability to detect, investigate, and respond to and recover from info security incidents to minimize business impact. So for this domain, you need to know how to build response plans and manage incidents. And again, this includes identifying and detecting incidents, classifying them, investigating them, containing them, making appropriate notifications and communications both inside and outside your organization, knowing when to escalate, and then of course knowing how to recover. This also includes collecting, preserving, and presenting evidence um, when developing an incident response plan. I always try to ask the management, the leaders, what is most important, halting an incident or collecting evidence for, for catching and prosecuting the, the bad guy? Because sometimes those are at odds with each other. Stopping an incident, halting an incident may destroy evidence. But anyway, this particular blurb talks about um, understanding the admissibility of evidence, its quality and completeness, and how to maintain chain of custody. Next, you also need to know how to train and test response teams, your organization and management. This talks to making sure your team is trained and has the appropriate tools, as well as conducting exercises for managers and other members of the organization, not just the team. You need to be able to integrate into incident response with other organization processes, especially your business continuity and disaster recovery processes. And then you need to be able to evaluate how well you handled an incident. This includes collecting metrics like quantifying the damages and the cost, how many FTE hours did you spend, um, and other business impacts. For example, are there regulatory or compliance issues you may have to deal with, like if you had a data breach? So those are the four domains. Now, this is how I studied. As always, your mileage may vary. I reviewed the domains, of course, duh. But I also took a CISM boot camp class that it was over a weekend and it was if you know Kim Jones and Debbie Christofferson, they were my teachers. But the very best thing I did, I bought a question answer database and I took many, 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 many practice tests. Um, that database was worth its price, even though I don't remember how much I paid for it now. Um, ISOC, of course, has a whole bunch of resources on their website that they are happy to sell you. From my experience taking the test, the key points, you need to understand Isaka's lingo. What words are they using to describe certain things? What are their terms? Oops. And then of course, during the test, choose the best answer. The best answer may not be the perfect 
answer. But of the choices given, it may be the best. And the most important point, know what Isaka considers the correct or the best answer. Um, sometimes real life experience versus test questions and answers, they aren't always the same. And that's why that question answer database really helped me. So how'd I do? These are my actual honest to God exam results. Now I took the exam, gosh, it feels like a hundred years ago. I took it December 10th in 2011. At the time, if you wanted to take the test, you had to take it um, in a room with everybody else who wanted to take the test. ISACA only offered the CISM exam two times a year, in December and in June. So this is before they went to the computerized testing, before they went to the authorized testing locations. And so again, you basically have hundreds or thousands of people across North America, well, actually across the world, taking the exam on the same day, twice a year. So my score, I did okay. Um, well, you'll see in a minute. My total was 703 out of a possible 800. Again, I have, honestly, I have no clue how Isaka weights the different questions to come up with this score. They say it's a scaled score. Um, but you can see how I did in the various domains. I did pretty well in risk management, not quite as well in security program development. And I scored an overall 703. 450 is the minimum passing. Now, you ready for what happened? I actually earned the highest score of everybody taking the test on that December day in the North America geographical region. And um, I got this little award from ISACA, which is pretty cool. So <laughs> this is my damn I'm good part two. <laughs> anyway, that's kind of why I was asked to talk about the exam. All right. so. Is it worth it? Is the CISM worth it? And again, everything here is just my opinion for the most part. So first, per ISACA, um, getting the CISM will burst your earning potential. It counts in the hiring process and it enhances your professional credibility and recognition. And they have studies to prove this. Per me, well, yeah, I kind of sort of agree with what Isaka says. I did not get a raise after I passed the test, although the my boss's boss, um, the director of the division, basically came over and congratulated me. And then he said, oh, so only two people took the test the day you took it, which of course was giving me crap for earning the award. And yes, he was joking. Um, but to me, it also helped me prove to myself that I really do know my stuff. I really do know what I'm talking about most of the time. Not always, but most of the time. And little letters after your name look good. As long as you don't have too many little letters after your name. Um, when I am hiring, which I'm well, yeah, I did do in this role. I don't want somebody who has a thousand certifications because I don't know when that person actually has time to work. But there are some certifications that I specifically look for. And the CISM, these reasons are mostly true for pretty much any certification. Uh, when you consider whether or not folks are looking for hiring managers are looking for CISM credentialed um, candidates. 
as of March 29th, um, per Indeed, Indeed.com, the job search site. Across the nation, there were over 4,000 jobs looking for a CISM and 86 jobs here in the Phoenix area. But compare that to the CISSP. There are almost 13,000 jobs that looked for the CISSP, um, 210 here in Phoenix. But then you look at the type of jobs. So there are obviously more engineering type jobs for CISSP, um, where the CISM is looking for the more managerial or governance or controls oriented uh, candidates which giving CISM is Certified Information Security Manager, that makes sense. So you can see um, on the right, the graphic shows just three of the jobs that came up, an Info Security Manager in, in Nebraska for a bank, a Compliance Manager for C Computer Services Incorporated, whoever they are, um, in Kentucky, and American Express was looking for an analyst in vulnerability management. Again, analyst type, uh, manager type, even though CISSP will look for those also, using the CISM will help focus that search if that's what you're looking for. And the bottom line is, what do you want to be when you grow up? If you want to be technical and you want to stay technical, Personally, I would recommend earning the CISSP because that's like the, I don't know, it's like the ticket to entry. I won't call it a golden ticket, but most HR folks are going to look for a CISSP. And then I actually recommend going in getting SANS certifications just because they are so hands-on and um, I consider them very well respected in the industry. And yes, I know they're incredibly expensive. I understand that. Um, if you want to move into management or leadership, then again, I recommend getting the CISSP. And yeah, I think the CISM would be a good certification to get. So again, this is just my opinion. I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> it's an educated opinion. Not perfect, though. All right. Um, I want to totally change directions here and hopefully add a little bit of value to you. I mentioned um, as part of my role, I share an awful lot of information. Uh, right now, we are in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. Um, lots of people are working from home. We are seeing, everybody seems to be seeing um, a huge uptick in phishing around coronavirus themes, uh, a huge in, uptick in scams. Um, bad guys are using coronavirus themed lures and malicious websites to help spread all different types of malicious software. But in this section, um, I just want to list some tools and resources that you might find helpful. And I am happy to share this presentation. I'll make sure it can get posted. Anyway, um, there's a site on Pastebin that's list. A lot of the URLs associated with COVID-19. Um, and as I say on the slide, you might find some, some possible typo squatting instances for your organization. Now, not all of these are malicious, um, but I'm, I'm sure a <laughs> bunch are. <laughs> all right, next. Ookalinda uh, has their speed test available online. So you can see if uh, COVID-19 has an impact on global internet performance. And it shows you basic speed, um, packet loss, things like that. 
Another favorite is downdetector.com, which shows you whether or not uh, some of our favorite internet services are having problems or how many people are reporting issues with them. And I have seen these numbers or these graphs increase as more people are working from home or taking classes at home. Uh, the National Institute of Standards and Technology has a telework cyber cybersecurity page. Uh, they have all kinds of information, basic telework security, um, information for organizations. They have a couple infographics I saw, like, you know, making sure that you protect yourself from eavesdropping when you're doing a conference call. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can share with your people to help protect them, as well as protect your organization. Uh, Team Cymru is offering free access to a portal that will let you list, or actually you can post up to 50 IP addresses to identify whether or not that IP has been compromised. Uh, this is actually pretty useful. I like this. Oh, if you're not sure what DMARC is or how it works, um, the Global Security, excuse me, the Global Cyber Alliance is offering um, a free DMARC boot camp. They did one last year. This is the second one they're offering. It begins on May 4th. It is free. I strongly recommend it. And if you haven't implemented DMARC at your organization, please do. It's a way to authenticate email to prevent spoofing, as well as other ways to secure email. Uh, University of Cincinnati actually ha made their malware analysis class public. If you're into that, um, or you want to learn it, it's uh, the website is basically just a list of the lectures. I have not taken it. As I mentioned, I don't consider myself technical any longer. If anyone does take it, let me know how it was. And there's a project from Abuse um, to share malware samples. And it's a malware bazaar, which I think is kind of nice. I know Virus Total has a lot of information. Um, here's another one. And I have to say that the our State Fusion Center, the Arizona Counterterrorism Information Center, issued an advisory back on February 18th, warning COVID-19 is coming. Um, the expected cyber and business continuity risks, and then the recommendations to mitigate those risks, which basically boiled down to update your BC plans. Uh, if anybody wants a copy, just let me know. Here's my email address again. And then on March 19th, we issued an advisory to help safeguard tele workers or home remote workers. So it listed the current COVID-19 related incidents that we're seeing, of which there were a bunch, and then mitigations. So the mitigations range <laughs> for everything from keeping your, your PC updated, running antivirus, um, using a VPN or whatever your um, organization recommends for remote access. And again, um, just send me an email. I am happy to share these. And as I mentioned, sign up for my distro list. You'll get these when I issue them, as well as newsletters and other information, some pass through from other partners. So I hope this was helpful and useful to you. If you have any questions, again, feel free to reach out to me. Um, folks who know me know I am incredibly blunt, usually, not always politically correct. Um, and I will share pretty much as much as I possibly can. Also, if you need resources, 
I have all different types of um, documents I can share, such as policy samples based on the NIST cybersecurity framework. Um, I have all kinds of presentations that I'm happy to share. So again, I want to thank everybody. I hope this was useful for you. And please stay safe and sane. Okay. Thanks. Okay.